welcome back guys to my channel thank you so much for being here with me so today i'm gonna to be reacting to jordan peterson calmly dismantles family room in front of two feminists whoa in front of two feminists he dismantled them thoroughly and guys if this is the kind of content that you love don't forget to smash smash that red button and turn on the bell too so that you're notified each and every time any new video is coming up so let's sit down Enjoy this beautiful talk by Jordan Peterson. One of our guests of the day, the other one today, is a man you may recognise, or maybe you don't. Jordan Peterson has achieved that rare feat, becoming a global superstar academic. So how did he become so well known? He first came to national prominence in Canada in 2016 in a debate about new laws on gender identity. Bill C-16 made it an offence to refuse to call someone by their chosen gender pronoun. Jordan Peterson argued that this would infringe free speech, while some supporters of the bill said he was advocating prejudice. From there, well, his YouTube star took off, and he has now over one million subscribers. And his videos, where he talks everything from identity politics, which we've touched on, to the Bible, to Disney movies, have been viewed over 150 million times. Gosh, that's about the same number of viewers we have on this programme. Huh. Last year, he supported ex-Google employee James Damore, who had been fired for suggesting men and women have different interests due to... Oh. 12 rules for life i'd really love to, li to read that book 12 rules about the new life to biological differences and his latest book 12 rules for life has taken him on a global tour promoting his ideas i'd really 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 love to get in touch with that book 12 rules about life the rules that you need to know about life wow and just this week, he sold out the 1,000-seater Emmanuel Centre around the corner here in Westminster. Um, so, Jordan, you've done endless interviews. You've been publicising yeah. You've been publicizing your book, and they've generated plenty of heated debate. And I actually sold out the Apollo. It had 5,000 seats. All right, stop boasting. <laughs> um, do you think, though, because of the heat that has been generated, that your views have been misrepresented at times? Oh, definitely, but that's, you know, that's part and parcel of the process. I did take a very... Um, uh, forceful stance, let's say, against some of the excesses of the radical left-wingers, and it's in their best interest to paint me as uh, somehow a figure of the extreme right, because then I don't have to be contended with. But, I mean, it's easy for people's views to be oversimplified in a very large public debate. I mean, in terms of some of the issues, I mean, you say you've been uh, painted as, a, as a, an extreme right-winger. No, some or, people have tried yeah. that. Not very successfully, but... They've tried it. And you came to prominence um, in part over your opposition to this law that we just talked about yeah. in Canada, proposing the use of preferred pronouns for transgender people. Mm. Just like the the those questions. Are... Yeah. <laughs> right. That Saying that you issue. should do it. No, but, that you had to do it. Uh, right. You had to do it by right. law. But just for clarity, do you think a trans woman is a real woman? Who is a real woman? <laughs> I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. Now, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, she I'm asking you, in your mind, oh. you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman oh my is goodness. a woman? No. Why not? Because I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies, and they have female genitalia, and they have an XX chromosome, and, and I think the biological markers are relevant. It doesn't necessarily mean that I don't think that people should be treated with respect and dignity if they happen not to fit easily into a gender category. That's a different issue. Right. But, but it's a matter of definition. And, and I actually think it's a foolish argument in some sense. Because what do you mean by real? Well, I mean, you've just clarified that, though. You, you, you don't think um, that a trans woman is a woman. And do you, do you think that that is what is behind or explains your opposition to this idea of a law mandating you to use I'm really loving the way Jordan Peterson is actually answering these questions very calmly. And I think it's like he's trying to prove a point to them. He's trying to prove a point to them that they're actually wrong. And wow, I really love the way he's explaining, giving out answers. Awesome use a no. preferred pronoun is because you don't actually believe that that's the truth, that a trans woman is a woman and therefore you can't use that pronoun? No, that's not my argument at really? all. Really? 
Yeah, really. My yeah, argument uh, is that the no, government should compel is. voluntary speech. No, but I know what your argument is, and no, you've made it very really clearly. It. No, but, but behind, that's exactly it. But the no motivation behind, behind no motivation it. behind it. But you don't believe. I wouldn't have put everything on my li online in my life to take the stance I did unless I had thought that through very deeply. And I've thought it through very deeply. There aren't hidden motivations that have to do with some arbitrary prejudice against trans no, people. He doesn't okay. It's purely, well. pure and simply this. There's never been a time a in English common law history where the government compelled speech and the Canadian government dared to do that. And that was unacceptable. And they masked it with this show of, of compassion for the He's oppressed. Not and a I don't feminist, buy it. Right, but you would, as I think you said, at an individual level, mm -hmm. if somebody Wouldn't asked have. you if you know, somebody asked you to use a particular pronoun, you would do mm -hmm. so. Well I have. You have. Yes. Right. Fine. Yes. Let's talk about feminism. Are you a feminist? Uh, no, not as it's currently defined, certainly not. No. Uh, well, in any other definition? Well, I think that anybody who doesn't think that the the competitive landscape should be opened up for equality of opportunity mm -hmm. is not thinking. And so everyone's interests are better served if people have as equal access to opportunity to display it's their talents become an and to manifest ideological their talents in the world as possible. Well, so in that the... sense, certainly. But feminism now, it's as far, and this is why it's so deeply unpopular, a very small minority of women in the UK identify as feminists. And the reason for that is it's primarily become an ideological weapon. And it's an ideology. I just love the way Jordan Peterson he is just so calm. He's just so calm. I think these ladies, they're trying to test his patience, but he's proving them wrong. He's just so calm, so patient, answering them bit by bit, question by question. This is just incredible, awesome. That I don't, I, I detest actually the ideology that it's associated with, collectivist ideology. Right, I mean, okay, and that's your view about feminism. Aisha, are you a feminist? Oh, absolutely. I'm a very proud uh, feminist. And when I was um, a special advisor in government, I worked on women and equality issues. And I was very proud, actually, of a piece of legislation mm -hmm. I got in the statute book with my former boss, Harriet Harman, the Equality Act. Uh, in 2010, which strengthened our anti-discrimination um, laws. And I fought very hard to get more women into public life, into the Labour Party. And yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm very, very proud of being a feminist, hence my pink dress. Oh, well, <laughs> all right. Um, obviously reverting to type then Absolutely. in the pink dress. Absolutely, well. Um, oh, he's you a would clinical like men to regain or awesome. reclaim their no strength so physically, patient. mentally and wow. morally. Is that broadly correct? And I really love his I would calmness. say morally, fundamentally, but I think the other things go along with that. Right. And, and if <laughs> but it isn't men precisely who I'm, who I'm speaking to. The moment you just mentioned that he's, he is a clinical psychologist, these two things just came into my mind, my mind. His career, his profession, needs him to be so attentive, so calm, so patient. No wonder he's just so patient, so calm. And I really love his humbleness when answering these women. Mm. It's, it's people. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm actually interested in individuals and I'm interested in their fortification against tragedy. You know, every time I do an interview, the interview is always political. It's always mm. political. Well, the, and cl the clue is in the title of this program. <laughs> we are the Daily Politics. Oh, Politic. no, no, fair enough. No, 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 fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. And I'm, I'm not casting aspersions <laughs> at this program, but the fundamental news that's important about what I'm doing isn't the political element. And the people who but talk what? to me don't talk politically. They well. say they... But I'm sure he's really proving these ladies to be very wrong. He's really proving them wrong by... Actually, you can see the ladies are trying to interrupt him as much as possible. Why are they interrupting him when he's answering the question? Oh. They've watched but, but my part, lectures. But part and of that it they're... is... Sorry, is that I think for a lot of people, the kind of personal does become the... the the, the, the political. Or the political becomes the personal. Yeah, and I think in terms of the... Yeah, the, but in the, this I... situation, a lot of people are wrong because primarily what's happening is people are watching my lectures and as a consequence, their lives are improving dramatically. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure they are. I'm sure people are like, have had a huge conversion after it's and they're much happier once they've been... It's not a conversion. Happier, it's not a been... conversion. But it's, what, it's what I would to... like to do is, is kind of almost... I think at the moment, the discussion about feminism is very d d divisive and it, sometimes it can sort of be like, Okay, men have mm -hmm. to lose and women have to gain. Actually, mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody has a lot 
to gain mm. by greater equality. Now, whether you get the equality of outcome that you want, I think only time will tell. But certainly, equality of opportunity is is very important. And actually, well, we a lot and a lot of men would mm. would benefit from that. So I think a lot of That's men, men are having a lot of crises at the moment in terms of mental, mental health, mm. suicide issues, um, their is own really sense of identity. Women, because this I think really some of the stereotypes so put on men really like are quite limiting for them as well. I think they make men quite unhappy as well. The so devil's in the details with regards to equality because I'm a, an advocate of equality of opportunity. But and I outcomes. Think the idea, outcomes. That's an appalling doctrine. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hang because on. you well, have to produce an unbelievably potent Actually, to make the ever greater and ever finer distinctions that are about necessary to enforce what equality of outcome. About How many it group differences are you going to equalize across? Right is it just gender and about. sex? How many genders? No, so gender and ethnicity? How many genders? I think How many what, ethnicities? What are, How many races? <laughs> we'll let Aisha answer. I think what, what people are trying to do with this, and certainly as somebody who you know has looked to do, sought to sort of do this myself, I think you set yourself ambitions for, for what you would like to equality. see. And you try and remove mm. as many of the, the structural barriers and mm. obstacles. So you try and create that, you know, it's fair such crack a long of the way to go. And There's that such a long way to go to see where you get to equality. with the outcomes. That's now, fine. We in are in countries. very early stages. It's only a hundred years since you know women got the vote mm. in this country. You know, we have had a long established patriarchal society and set up for, for a long time in the world in this country. So I think we have a long way to go to see where it plays out. There is no country in the world where you know we really do have gender equality um, properly yet in terms of dis real decision making and and real some of the power. Scandinavian countries maybe but I, th they're still not quite there and I think All you've right. spoken a lot about this Scandinavia there's still a way to go in Scandinavia yeah, there's so things much are not denial, perfect well, in I Scandinavia haven't, I haven't at spoken all. about that specifically I've spoken mm. about, you spoke the, about the right stuff yesterday I, you talked about the well Scandinavian. I've spoken about the fact that you see one of the things that's happened in the analysis of the differences between men and women is that the social constructionist claim is that mm. the differences are socially constructed, mm. right? Is that it's a consequence of environment that men and women no, what differ. What kind of question but is that they're asking? What the scientific How literature do you square indicates that? is that as I'm actually cultures waiting become for that more answer. egalitarian, gonna give them. like they have in <laughs> Scandinavia, the differences between men and women actually increase yeah. rather than decreasing, which is a direct repost to the social constructionist view. So they just deny all that. The biggest differences in the world in That's interest a good and temperament answer. That's a good are between answer. Scandinavian a good men and women. It's exactly the opposite of what everyone well, predicted. Can I just pick up on one thing you said a little earlier in the interview, yeah. which you said it's the moral guidance that you are, are, are focused on. You think that yeah. is particularly important. How do you square that with the behavior of perhaps arguably, you know, a prominent I don't like the way they are keeping on disrupt, disrupting him each and every time. Look at the way they are disrupting each and every time. Oh my goodness. No, 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 no. An alpha male. They're not even giving him United any States, time, Donald any space Trump, for him to answer. Um, when his behavior, I mean, mm. he is accused of having an affair with a porn star when his wife <laughs> was pregnant. How does that fit with morally reclaiming? Um, well, you know, I would the say that was rather clearly immoral. Yeah, right. Yeah, but you would not still not to be a target for emulation. But you still would have voted for something. him over well, Hillary to Clinton fair, those, as, to as fair, an though, identity politics. It, the, I mean, it's just how, really how he was on the table. And I said I might have voted for him matter. on a whim. That's but all. you also said say you started out feeling quite close to I Hillary Clinton. Can I just come yeah, on, on the very quickly because we've got to move on. In a way, I don't, really, I don't care what Trump does in terms of his private life. But what I don't have is him stopping or potentially stopping other women having agency over their reproductive rights and lots of men taking those decisions. It's all about where the moral outrage lies and what's more morally outrageous um, in, in people's eyes. Is it his behaviour or the identity politics for you on the? Anyway, we'll have to discuss this another time. James, what do you think? People are thinking about him. Jordan Peterson is actually speaking the whole, but nothing but the bitter truth. So, guys, thank you so much for being here with me. And if you've liked this video, you think this is the kind of content that you love, don't forget to show me some love and support by smashing it. Hit the subscribe button, join this beautiful family of ours, and remember to turn on the bell. See you next time.